Hello everybody, welcome back to our virtual classroom and another lesson in our trades training video series. In this lesson, we're going to cover fasteners and how they work. So let's get right into it. Let's talk about screws, specifically their parts. I have a very large screw here. This is a specialty screw and like a nail, screws have a head on them and the head is for clamping the top material that we're trying to fasten. They'll have a shank on them and on the shank will be threads. These threads typically will wind clockwise and will pull that fastener into the material. Also, we will have a point on our screw that's going to help it get started, get, it'll bite into the material, and then with the threads, it'll pull in. So a deeper dive into the head of a screw brings us to a couple of different types. So you'll have two main categories of screw heads. And that will be one that's countersunk. That means it, the screw will end up ultimately flush with the surface of the material it's being driven into. And then you'll have non-countersunk. This screw is designed to sit on top of the material, tight to that surface, but still exposed. There are also a lot of different drive types that are stamped into screw heads. It's really important that you are able to identify, learn, and then use the correct driver type for each screw. So let's go over some of those different driver types. If you see a slotted screw head, this is not a good choice for driving with a drill and a driver bit. These are non-centering uh, driver types and they tend to slip out, can cause damage to the material and injury. A better choice would be a Phillips head, which is an improvement on a slotted head. This one is what we call self-centering. It's a simple X that's stamped in and the bit fits into that very tightly and will not slip out. Next up, we have an improvement to our Phillips. That's a Torx head. These have a six-sided uh, sort of a star shape to them. These are superior because they are very forgiving. They're easier to drive. And I'll tell you from my experience, nine out of 10 people given the choice between a Phillips head and a Torx head will choose the Torx head. You can get a lot more torque out of them, which is interesting because of the name, but the Torx, uh, the downside of that extra torque is you need a lot more control to not overdrive them. One other thing to mention about driver bit types is you not only need to know the correct style of driver bit, but the size becomes a really important uh, decision to make. So one quick um, rule of thumb is that the driver bit needs to fit tightly. If you cannot get the fastener to fit snugly on the driver tip without falling off, chances are you've got the wrong size. So there are different size torques, there's different size Phillips, and each driver type will have different sizes. So make sure you're able to identify and correctly match those up as well. You might see a square drive screw, and I have one here. This is a tiny little screw. A square drive is literally, as it sounds, a square that's stamped in there. It takes a matching bit. There's a few sizes of these as well. These are not the most forgiving type of uh, screw heads and you have to be very careful when you're driving them, they can strip out. But on a tiny screw like this, it works just fine. You might see a hex drive and you might see an internal or an external hex drive. Here you'll see the external hex drive. This takes a socket type driver bit and it offers a lot of strength. So this uh, type of screw, as you can see, this large screw would require a lot of force and power to put into the material. An internal one would have this hex shape stamped into the head. The shank of the screw will change based on the strength needed from the screw, and we'll get into sizing of screws next. But keep in mind that the shank is thinner than the width of the threads, and that is made so that the threads give your gripping power and your shank is what's going to deliver or force those threads into the material. So if you notice, this is an exaggerated version, but not all of the shank has threads on it all of the time. This part of the shank is smooth and the threads only exist down here. And all of your clamping and gripping will happen in this area right here. This is assumed that your, your material is this deep and all of this gets clamped by the head. Some of my other screws here work, uh, are not quite as extreme. So I have this one here and this shoulder edge up here, this shank is smooth. 
and then the threads start here. So if your material is only this thick, this screw would not grip or grab at all. You might see variations of screw threads, and there's a lot of them. Here are two of your most basic. We have a fine thread here, and then we have a coarse thread. That means more threads per inch on this screw. What does that do to, to the way they work? A fine threaded screw is going to wind into the material slower. It will work in thinner materials like metals, thin metals, and the coarser screw threads will wind in much faster. So these are good for wood and general use. Actually, either one could be used in wood, but these will wind in much faster and they hold very well. There's a lot of variations of the points of screws, but I can break them down into some just basic categories. If you've ever used a screw with a dull point, it's very difficult to get them started, to get them to bite, and to drive them through. So on the presentation, you see some variations of points. Some are sharper than others, and the more sharp the point, the more piercing power it has. Uh, if you're trying to drill or put a screw into metal, you might use a self-piercing screw. That's a very sharp point. A wood screw would have sort of a typical normal point like this one. And you might even see a self-tapping screw. This is a really cool version. It actually has what is basically a drill bit on the end of it. These will drill their own hole in metal and then the threads will catch. So this is sort of a combination specialty screw that's worked, uh, that's used a lot in metal work. Screw sizing is a lot different than nails and screws will be called out in numbers, number four, number six, number eight. This will call out the shank diameter of the screw. The difference between nails and screws are that you could have a number four, but there will be a range of different lengths within that gauge of screw shank. And you can see here, I've got several number sixes. And if I line these up, uh, they run a range all the way up to, I've got three quarters all the way up to probably two inches and they can run even longer and even shorter. So the trick here is, is that the shank has to be strong enough for the screw to wind in. There's a lot of stress on that shank when you're turning it in, and it has to hold well. So you will not, you will run out of uh, a certain limit of length on this particular shank size. Then you'll go up to the next shank size, and there'll be a range of lengths within that one as well. When we're talking about nails, if you call out a 16D nail, we know the length of that nail, it's three and a half inches. When we call out a screw like a number six, we then have to decide the length of that screw. That number six does not give us the length, only the diameter of the shank. Let's get into some different types of screws. This is a general purpose screw, and let me stop and give you some details on this that we haven't talked about yet. The head on this screw has a name, it's called a bugle head. It sort of is a beveled head, and we talked about how screws either sit on top of the surface, they level out with the surface, or they're set below the surface. A bugle head on a screw will level itself out flat with the surface. That's the purpose of it. Also, in this general purpose screw, it not only has a bugle head, this one also has a Phillips drive stamped into that head. It has coarse threads on it, and it also has a standard point. One thing to mention too is the plating on this screw, which we'll talk about later. This has a weather resistant plating on it. If you look at this drywall screw, it looks very similar to the one we just looked at, the general purpose. The only real difference between these two screws is the plating or the finish or coating on it. This has a black phosphate coating on it. This would be used for drywall. You'll see a lot of these. They come in different lengths and are very similar to this one. There's not a lot of variations to drywall screws. There is a whole category of what we call structural screws. These screws rival nails in their strength. They're made with a better quality steel and they're heat treated to add to that strength. They'll have variations on their heads, their drive types, and different points and lengths and shank diameters on them. Bottom line, these screws are used for structural situations like framing where there's a lot of weight and stress on them. They are much less likely to break. A truss head screw can be used for metal to metal connections. It can also be used to connect 
thin materials to a base material. As you can see, the benefit of a truss head screw is a very large head. I would compare a truss head screw to a roofing nail. This is the screw equivalent. It has a very wide head. This one has a Phillips drive on it. And look at that point. That is a self-piercing point that pierces metal or thin sheet metal. You might use something like this if you were framing metal studs. <laughs>